Hello, we're here in Jewel Images Studio with Julia Kelleher. Thank you so much for having us today. Thank you. We are going to talk a little bit about Julia's upcoming class that she's teaching for OPPA called Knowing Newborns. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you are famous for your newborn photography. Thank you. Everybody loves your work. Thank you. Um, how did you get involved in doing newborn photography? Oh my gosh, well I've started doing them early on before I even had a baby myself. Um, but I think it got really intense and emotional for me when you know my own son was born. I think that's a common common thing for us newborn photographers. And then it was just it was a lot of trial and error, a lot of learning, a lot of going to workshops. Um, and then over the years, you just as you handle more and more babies, you get better and better at it and able to to read them. I think is what it comes down to. I've watched some of your behind the scenes videos, and you definitely know how to hold a newborn. <laughs> Not everybody has that skill, so that's something I hope you'll be teaching yes, in the workshop. Most definitely. Newborns are um, something, you know, obviously they can't communicate with you, but you can communicate with them through your touch, your, uh, as, as voodoo as it sounds, your aura. You know, if, if you're calm and relaxed, they're going to be more calm and relaxed, and they can sense your energy. And so learning how to read your own energy and then translate that to the baby is going to help you have more success keeping them asleep, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to talk about that in the workshop. We're going to demo that. We're going to talk about wrapping babies. I mean, that's a huge oh, yeah. skill. Like if you can't wrap a baby, you're going to have a, a lot of issues in your sessions. It's going to be hit or miss. But if you can wrap a baby tight and beautifully and artistically, you'll nail sessions whether a baby's five days old or three weeks old. It doesn't matter. Awesome. So when you look at your schedule for the week and you see this particular appointment coming in that makes you really excited, what kind of appointment would that be? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Um, well, I have to admit, I really love photographing siblings with, with babies. They're challenging. You know, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes the you... The 18-month-old? Yeah. <laughs> sometimes you, like, want to pull your eyes out, but at the same time, it's also somewhat exciting. I think parents love the images so much, and I think a lot of photographers are very scared of sibling images, and if they nail them, they're gonna become known for that, and that's gonna raise them above the bar. It's gonna make them stand out as newborn photographers. I really love sibling shots. I think they're, they're you know, like I said, it's kind of a love-hate thing, mm -hmm. because you just kind of, especially depending on the age, you kind of dread it, but at the same time, when you nail it, it's just that feeling. Yes, that's a sale in the bag. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's the money shot right there. <laughs> well, and that gives you longevity because if, if all you can do is newborns and you can't do the family and extended, it, it doesn't give you longevity. Exactly. So um, I have been really enjoying your maternity images that Thank you've been you. posting lately. And you do them a little bit differently than I think is common. What's your approach to maternity? Well, I'm kind of anti-flowy fabric thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, the, the flowy dress fabric, which is beautiful, don't get me wrong, I love it. But I've, so many photographers are doing it these days that I've kind of said to myself, you know what, I'm going to stay away from that. With maternity, I've kind of taken a commercial approach and more of a high, not high fashion, but a casual fashion, like as if a mom was posing for a maternity outfit ad. So kind of covering the strategic places, but celebrating the belly in a way that's classic, clean, kind of has that J. Crew restoration hardware, hip uh, feel to it with still that neutral, more monochromatic look, but Nick 86ing that, that flowy fabric in a field kind of thing. So I know that half of your workshop is going to be on sales and marketing and you yeah. are the marketing maven. I love business. How did you, how <laughs> did you become so passionate about uh, marketing? That's such a good question. Marketing is kind of a game and it's really fun. And in the beginning when I struggled with marketing, I was so focused on the results. But what I realized was as I you know, kind of tried these marketing efforts and when I say marketing right now, I'm talking like specifically promotion, like going, okay, here's my business, screaming from the rooftops, come hire me. That's what I mean. Not branding, internal components, the sure. business. I'm talking about screaming from the rooftops. And when I first started doing that, I was so bent out of shape when I would spend a lot of money on a project or a marketing promotion and nobody would show up. Ideal clients may not always book. It may not be the right time. But when you put yourself out there in a promotion of some kind, 
you're making yourself visible to the world. And that's ultimately what's important and you have to enjoy that process of making yourself visible. And I think that photographers get so hung up on the actual results that they miss the forest for the trees. And if you can kind of reset your, your mindset on what marketing means and actually have fun enjoying the process and, and just realize that every single effort you're doing is making an impact in your community, then all of a sudden you reap the rewards of that later. Marketing is not black and white. It's not do this, get clients. Mm -hmm. It's do this, see that, enjoy that, talk to that person, build that relationship, and it's just this slow melding that starts to bring people in the door. The snowball effect. It's a snowball effect, mm -hmm. and I, you nailed it, yeah. And so when you can embrace that, marketing becomes kind of a game, and you can be very strategic about it, and even though it's kind of this amorphous thing, it's still possible to create a system out of it and ultimately do a step-by-step -step actionable process to get people in your door. Will they all come in right away on step five once you're done? No, you may have to repeat steps three, four, and five again, but ultimately that will bring in people through the door. And having the patience to endure that and the foresight and the vision to see the big picture is truly what I think what makes a good marketer a good marketer. Awesome. Well, I am really excited Me too. for your class. It's I'm so excited. Great. We'll have Julia coming the night before to uh, judge at our June competition, and then bright and early on Friday morning, we'll be working with babies, learning some yep. new stuff. We'll be working with babies. We'll be doing marketing, some sales, and as much as we can fit into one day, obviously. But I'm, I just can't thank you guys enough for oh, for having me. We can't me. thank you enough. <laughs> this is awesome. We have this jewel right in our own thank organization, you. and we get to take advantage thank of it. You. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Looking Hope forward to, to see it. everybody there. Join us. Be there.